So hi folks, uh, welcome to Wido's Astro Forum. My name is Wido. I'm an astrophotographer from Utrecht, the Netherlands. I've been into this hobby for about six years. And today I want to talk about best telescopes to buy for astro for... Ah, sorry, I have to take this. Yes, hi what? What? You're looking for a telescope? <laughs> you, you've watched Cosmos? Yeah, 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 that's a nice documentary, yeah. So what do you want to do with the telescope? Take pictures? So, okay. What do you want to photograph? The planets? Wait, 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 hold on. Sorry guys, this can take a while. In this video, I'm going to do two things. So first of all, I'm just going to show you all of the telescopes I bought over the past couple of years. And I will talk about the pros and cons for each of those telescopes, uh, specifically with regard to astrophotography and planetary imaging. And second of all, I also want to talk about different astronomical objects you, you might be interested in photographing, especially uh, depending on the brightness and the size of those objects, I would actually recommend different kinds of telescope, uh, telescopes to start your astrophotography hobby. Now, uh, I'm not sponsored by anyone else than my wife. Wait, what? Yes, planets. Well, you need a long focal length telescope. Focal length. Yes. To magnify the planets, yes. So, you want to look into a sweet Cassegrain or a Maxitov type of telescope? No, no not Smith. Schmidt. S C H M. So let me quickly show you the very first telescope I ever bought, and that's this Celestron 102 SLT refractor telescope. Now, what does refractor mean? It simply means that this is a lens-based telescope. So you can see a lens sitting in front of the telescope here. You have lens-based telescopes called refractors, and mirror-based telescope called uh, telescopes called uh, reflectors. So remember that. Second of all, it's the 102 SLT. So 102 simply refers to the diameter of the lens that sits in front of your telescope. So the diameter is 102 millimeters. And in telescope land, this is referred to as the aperture. And just remember the larger your aperture is, so the bigger your lens or the bigger your mirror si uh, size is, um, the more light you can collect from a particular uh, object in space. Now, the focal length, so the length of this telescope is 660 millimeters, and that is just the distance from the lens of this telescope all the way to your camera sensor. And actually, focal length refers to the ability of your telescope to zoom in on a particular target. So let me show you this incredibly boring but important picture of astronomical objects created by myself because I don't have money for editors. From top to bottom, you'll have the brightness of some well-known astronomical objects in apparent magnitude, with the sun being the brightest astronomical object in the sky at the top, then the moon and planets, and finally some popular nebulas in space, which are rather dim. From left to right we'll have the size of the object in arc minutes, with the planets being the tiniest objects on the left and our neighboring Andromeda galaxy as the biggest target on the far right. I'll get back to this boring picture in the video to give you my thoughts on what kind of telescopes are best suited to capture each of these objects in space. What? So okay, you want to image the planets, but also photograph galaxies and... Nebulas like the Orion Nebula, yeah. yeah. Why didn't you say that before? Well, in that case, you need a modified Smith Cassegrain telescope. Yes, modified. Yeah, like the Celestron Edge HD or the Advanced Coma Free telescopes from Mead. What do you say? Too expensive? So, what's your budget? What? <laughs> no, 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 you're not going to make it with that budget. Is this telescope fit for planetary imaging and astrophotography? I would say uh, not really. Um, I have taken some pictures of the moon and the planets with this uh, telescope. The moon actually looks pretty decent. Uh, the planets will appear as small dots in the night sky. 
this is an Acroma telescope and that means it will also suffer from uh, color aberrations or chromatic aberration as it is called so I actually took a picture of the horse head nebula I will show it somewhere over here and you can really see this uh, horrible uh, purple color fringing so definitely not a telescope for uh, deep sky astrophotography yes so Andromeda and Orion they are some of the largest deep sky objects in space so you don't need yeah, so you don't need a long focal length telescope for those no yeah, yeah. A, a simple refractor with some extra dispersion or ED glass or an apochromatic refractor, it, that's fine. They also, they are called triplets as well. What? Yeah, refractor. So let me show you my second telescope I bought specifically for deep sky astrophotography. So this is my second scope, the Telescope Service 8480 Photoline F6 Apochromatic Refractor. So what does this actually all mean? Let's break it down. First of all, refractor simply means we are dealing with a lens-based telescope. Now 80 millimeters refers to the 80 millimeter in diameter we have here, um, or aperture of this particular telescope. And interestingly, if you compare that to my first telescope, you will notice that uh, the aperture is somewhat smaller. So the first telescope had an aperture of 102 millimeters. This telescope only has 80 millimeters of aperture. And uh, the same is true for the focal length. So we have 480 millimeters of focal length. And that's a little bit smaller as compared to that first telescope I showed you, which had 660 millimeters of focal length. So why would I trade in aperture? Uh, which gives you the ability to collect more light and why would I trade in focal length which actually gives you the ability to zoom in on particular deep space targets. Now the proof in the pudding is that this is an apochromatic or triplet refractor. And apochromatic simply means that this telescope has three instead of two lenses um, and one of the lenses has the high quality FPL 53 O'Hare glass and all of this provides a super well color corrected image of a deep sky object. So um, this is the Horsehead Nebula I took with this particular telescope. They're relatively cheap, lightweight, don't require uh, a lot of maintenance. Eh? Yes, you can also buy a reflector. Yes, a Newtonian reflector. They are cheaper, I know. Yeah, those are mirror-based. That's, that's okay. Now, most of them will be called astrographs. Astrographs, yes. Yeah, yes, they are cheaper, but you do need some collimation. Collimation. So you have two mirrors and you need to align them. It's not so difficult. So this is the final telescope I have above. This is the Celestron Edge HD modified Smith Cassegrain telescope. So what does this mean? Now, first of all, this is a Smith Cassegrain telescope. So uh, as you can see, uh, we are dealing with a mirror-based telescope. There's a mirror at the base of this telescope. Also, it offers a large diameter. So uh, this is an eight inch aperture telescope or 200 millimeters. And of course, this allows you to collect uh, more light coming from uh, deep space objects and uh, planets as compared to the lens-based telescopes I just showed you. Also, uh, despite its relatively modest uh, length, uh, it offers uh, a long focal length of 2030 millimeters in this case at least. And uh, this large focal length really allows you to zoom in on some of the tinier objects in deep space. So um, I also have to say that this is a modified Smith Cassegrain telescope. So uh, you have a difference between regular SCTs and modified SCTs. Regular SCTs, they are generally very good for moon and planetary uh, observations and imaging, uh, but not so well suited for deep sky astrophotography uh, because they suffer from coma. I will not get into that too much. Uh, but a modified Schmidt Cassegrain telescope is actually a pretty well a, uh, a good uh, telescope also to engage in deep sky astrophotography as well. 
And I, I have to say, I bought a 0.7 uh, reducer with this telescope, bringing the focal length a little bit down to about 1500 millimeters. And that really allows me to, uh, uh, to take pictures of tinier objects, tinier nebulas and galaxies that are also out there in deep space. So let's look at this incredibly boring picture to talk about what telescopes are suited for which astronomical targets. For big targets over 100 arc minutes like Andromeda, the North America Nebula and the Pleiades, a short focal length telescope between 200 and 400 millimeters will do the job. For example, the TS6360 photo line red, the William Optics 61360 Zenith Star or the popular but more expensive William Optics Red Cat 51LX will do the job. Heck, for the Andromeda Galaxy, you might even try out your regular DSLR camera without any scope. For nebulas and galaxies between 60 and 100 arc minutes like the Hart, the Rosette and the Orion Nebula, I'd advise you to look into telescopes with a focal length of about 400 to 600 mm, such as my telescope surface photo line 8480 mm, the Explorer Scientific ED80 or, if you have money to spend, the Celestron Rasa 8 inch. If you want to zoom in on the really tiny objects below 40 arc minutes, like the Great Hercules Cluster, the Wizard Nebula or the Whirlpool Galaxy, I'd recommend telescopes with a focal length above 600 mm, such as the Explorer Scientific 127 refractor, a good Newtonian reflector like the Orion 8 inch astrograph or a modified Schmidt Cassegrain telescope like my Celestron Edge HD 8 inch. For the planets you want to look at Schmidt Cassegrain or Maxitov telescopes with at least 2000 mm of focal length. Your next question probably will be about what cameras and telescope mounts are best suited for astrophotography. So I made a couple of videos about those topics you can check out as well. What? Use the fringe in Photoshop? I'm going to tell you, you, you will get some ugly deep sky pictures. Okay. Hey, let me send you some affiliate links with options. Hello? Hello? Rats. Every time the same thing. I'm getting so tired of this. <laughs>